What is one rank, one pension? One rank, one pension is the demand by veterans of the armed forces for a uniform pension to personal retiring in the same rank with the same length of service, irrespective of their retirement date. So, two officers who served as colonels for seven years will get the same pension even if they retired a decade apart. Veterans are angry because of the long delay in the implementation of the One Rank One Pension scheme. So, what's the status on it? Currently, all pre-2006 pensioners receive smaller pensions than not only their counterparts but even their juniors. So what's One Rank One Pension going to cost us? The Defence Ministry presently spends 93,216 crore on salaries every year for military personnel. Rs 54,500 crore is the pension bill for this year alone. And to implement OROP, we're going to need around 18 to 20,000 crore per year. So after implementing the OROP, the annual expenditure on military pensions will be around 75,000 crore. So basically, we'll be spending almost the same on our veterans as we do on our actual standing army. On 8th February 2009, more than 300 retired soldiers of varying ranks had marched to the Rashtrapati Bhavan in New Delhi and returned medals won in combat. However, it took further five years for the government to recognize the veterans' demands. In February 2014, the government accepted the demand of the ex-servicemen for the OROP and allocated Rs 500 crore to the Defence Pension Account. In the July 2014 budget, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley also announced an allocation of Rs 1000 crore towards OROP. In December 2014, Defence Minister Manohar Parikar said that the OROP will be implemented in the Defence Forces before the next budget. On 17 February 2015, Parikar approved the proposal for implementation of OROP, which is estimated to cost Rs 8,300 crore. But on 17 March 2015, the proposal was forwarded by the Ministry of Defence to the Ministry of Finance, where it has not moved since. So is the OROP a bad idea? While the demand for OROP isn't unjustified as veterans and their families need to make ends meet, it's based on a flawed understanding of what pensions are. Pensions are based on salary drawn at the time of retirement. It cannot be linked to a salary being paid for the same post 20 years later. Pensions are related to GDP growth. In India, GDP growth has accelerated over the last two decades. So people who retired at an earlier time lie at a disadvantage. While that's unfortunate, it's the inevitable reality of developing economies across the world. Unlike other government services, the bulk of the armed forces retires between the age of 35 to 40 years, with 80% of the military retiring between the age of 35 and 40, which means that the government is paying pensions to the armed forces for a far longer period than normal. While no one disputes the need for a young military, it is well known that servicemen, especially those who retire at a young age, often get absorbed into other jobs post-retirement. Another point is the number of years a soldier puts in before he retires. Surely it isn't fair to consider someone who retires after 30 years at par with someone who retires after 5 years. It also opens a Pandora's box. Services across the board may demand the same treatment. For instance, if soldiers are given the benefit of OROP because they safeguard the nation's borders, why should the border security force be deprived of it? This also holds true for the CRPF and the police forces and the Railways Employee Union, who, by the way, have already made a similar demand. Should the armed forces be an exception? Picture this. If the government is not able to bear the cost of providing OROP to 22 lakh ex-servicemen and 6 lakh widows, how will it be able to deal with pros of central and state government employees? 